The story thus far, f*** the world. And so continued the BSOD saga, part 8, The Road to Hell. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I said aloud as I drove down the road, my eyes glued to the windshield, everything was wrong, everything! My life, my car, I was digging my fingernails into the gear shift knob, making a little cave in the rubber, I popped another antacid. It didn't help. Oh, you mother I shouted at the car ahead of me as it moved along the road at 40 miles an hour, well below the 50 mile speed limit. I couldn't pass it, I couldn't honk my horn loud enough for it to hear... Or at least, whoever was inside didn't give a shit. I flipped them off. Then they slowed down. I passed them. They honked their horn and flipped me back the bird. My vision was red. Fuck, I'm running on. Stupid motherfucker. The stupid god piece of shit motherboard. Motherfuck, motherboard. Brand fucking new. Brand fucking new. Brand fucking new. Brand fucking new. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Get out of my damn way! I shouted to the cop ahead of me. I didn't calm down. What the hell is he gonna do? Arrest me? Shit. Oh wait, that's not a cop. It's just some asshole driving a white Grand Prix. I popped another antacid. Demons. Demons, 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 demons. Episode. Halloween episode. Maybe I should think of that. I mean, it was early in August, but you know, Halloween was just around the corner. <laughs> I drove down the road, splitting off from the main highway, and down the back roads, everything was blurry and red. I have to get home. It's okay, just gotta calm down, need to calm down, and everything will work out fine. Just need to calm down, calm down, calm down. The lights started to return to normal. It was okay. This was all probably a big contributing factor to my anxiety problem. I had them before, but not to this degree, no. The feeling that everything is just coming apart, but... In this case, at least, I had a way out. The board. The old board. It had to work. It just had to. You know? I drove up my driveway, my knuckles white. I thought I was going to pull off my steering wheel. Fuck. You know, they don't make those things sturdy enough. <laughs> they always wobble. I don't know the actual numbers, but I'd be willing to bet there's a lot more cases of people popping off their steering wheels than most might think. But then again, I'm not an expert. I just know it was easy to do on my old lawnmower. <laughs> I of course parked the car without taking it out of gear, stalling it half on, half off the grass, and ran into the house, tripping on the stairs as I did. I landed on my wrist. It felt like a bitch. I didn't care. I wrenched the door open and ran inside, my eyes darting around the room. My heart was still racing. I was breathing hard. My stomach hurt. <sighs> I felt like I was going to pass out, and then I saw it. My old motherboard, still on the table where I left it. And the cat. The cat was laying right on it! Sprawled out over its delicate surface. It didn't give a fuck. Of course it didn't give a fuck. It's a fucking cat! Scooter! I screamed at it, YOU mother OLD ASSHOLE HOUSE CAT! He just looked at me with dull, uncaring, cool eyes and stretched, raking his claws over it before jumping off the table and out the door I had left open. I stood there, just looking at it, a blank expression on my face. I slowly walked over to it and looked down at it. Cat hair, little claw marks, but other than that... Other than that, it didn't look too bad. I picked it up and looked at it closer. No. No, it was fine. Hey, it was fine! It was just fine! A little dirty, but fine! Using my fingers, I plucked the cat hair off its surface and ran back out the door, stopping only to look at the cat's eyes. You're lucky you're old, I said to him. Otherwise, I might just try and figure out how a cat tastes! Somehow, despite only having been off for a few minutes, the car was hotter than an oven inside, the rubber of the gear shift almost burning my hand. Riding back to Jeb's apartment, I took my time. Went slow. No sudden stops. Nothing was going to catch me off guard. Nothing was going to interrupt me. Nothing was going to hold me back. Beside me, the board glinting in the sun, shining like a little plate of gold-dotted silicon and metal, like a circuit board, because it was a motherboard. What do you expect? By now I wasn't exactly thinking straight. Caught behind a damn slow motherfucker again. Move! Move, you fucking little pinhead! And of course I managed to get caught behind this ass-munching fuck 
stick on the windy, bitchy part of the road back to the apartment where there's no passing zone. Ten minutes. Ten minutes to go three miles! What was the f***ing holdup? I wasn't able to tell for absolute certainty, but I swear I could see a cell phone in their hand. What really got to me, though, was the fact that they passed while talking on their cell phone and going super slow. Not one or two or three cops, but a f***ing procession of cop cars on their way to somewhere, I don't know. I do know I considered following this f***er back to wherever he was going and running him over the moment he got out of their f***ing car. Two hours after leaving Jeb's apartment, I finally, FINALLY got back, carefully taking the old board with me as I walked in. This was it. My last hope, and if this didn't work, then nothing would. Continued in Part 9.